Thank you. I have only conceptual jollies to offer, but it, it will be brief. So let's talk about design for concepts. And I don't mean uh, conceptual design or conceptual art law. It might overlap with those topics. Uh, in some ways, I want to talk about something more basic. When you have a concept, how do you express or communicate it? So first, let's uh, you know, have a concept of what a concept is. And like, here's a really simple one. A good fact is mostly true about something in particular, whereas a good concept is slightly true about a lot of things. That's it. That's the definition. So concepts are ways of gluing different kinds of experience together. They're a way of uh, sharing an understanding of the world, but they're speculative. They don't have a strong purchase on reality. But maybe one of the main functions, one of the main functions of a good concept may be to loosen the grip of some other concepts that we're holding too tightly. Now, one reason to think about uh, designing concepts is that we have very powerful new ways of organizing perceptions that go by the name of algorithms. The world is increasingly run by powerful interests who organize perceptions, experiences, and resources through algorithms that run on a vast infrastructure that they own and control. Now, fortunately, while uh, concepts have very little power to grasp the world, they can be quite cheap to make and share. Actually, concepts may be among the cheapest, lightest, quickest things you can design that can be shared. In a world run by algorithms, a good concept is a cheap way of organizing perceptions, maybe also in a more qualitative way. Since concepts are cheap, they can be by and for anybody. It's now widely recognized as important that everybody get to share the facts of their experience, even the mud fetish people should have their place, right? Uh, so facts are mostly true, but they're about particular experience. What might come next is designing concepts that are slightly true, but about a lot more experience, or that connect to a lot more experience. So everyone should have not only their own ways of communicating their experience, but of building a more general concept uh, about what that may imply for the world. You could think of Black Lives Matter and Me Too as rather well-designed concepts that, among other things, took the form of memes as a way to find what big chunks of experience could be imagined as sharing. Concepts far more readily than algorithms can be for the people, by the people, about the people. They can occupy any media at all. Indeed, one could think of concept as media that's not media specific. Good concepts usually have names, but they can work in other media, and sometimes they work best when you combine media. Uh, let me give some famous examples uh, that are usually thought of as art historical examples, but might just as well be thought of as media or design. These examples are connected to the avant-garde movement, Situations International. And I'll conclude with some examples from my own practice, which of course are much more minor by comparison, so I'm not putting these things on the same plane. Uh, first example, the concept of psychogeography, designed by Guy Debord, given visual expression with the help of uh, Asger Yuan. So okay, geography is a way of experiencing the city, of detecting its ambiences. It's based in a practice and experience of the city as it might be felt and known outside the relentless carving up of time between work and leisure. Uh, it starts with drifting, with wandering, to find those aspects of the city that might be fragments of a better one or another city for another life. And this concept is closely associated with a design. Uh, the altered... Uh, maps may communicate not only the experience, but also a concept. So the second example generalizes from the first. Jacqueline de Jong, uh, who was a member of the Situationist International, later edited a journal called the Situationist Times. She made a series of issues on spatial figures, such as the labyrinth and the intersecting ring. And many of the il illustrations are taken from art and design from across cultures and times. Uh, the concept is that these designs are more than just pleasing shapes. They are themselves concepts. Each figure is a concept of a situation, of a way in which we interact with the world and experience it. They're concepts of different kinds of play with and in the world. Here we can see that the concepts are not tied to language and are actually not a new idea at all. Certain kinds of diagram may be ancient forms of the concept. 
Now, when I wanted to write uh, books about the situation international, it seemed appropriate to try to learn something uh, from their practice of design for concepts and to experiment with it myself. And here's just a couple of examples. The situations were famous for taking uh, comic strips and making them vehicles for their concepts. Uh, it's a great way to design a concept for easy circulation. So actually, uh, what I did was the reverse practice of that design. They took existing uh, comic frames and inserted new dialogue. Uh, what I did was I took the dialogue, their dialogue, uh, and uh, with the graphic novelist Kevin Pyle, made new art. Kevin's images are based on photographs that I collected for him, uh, but his drawings are a way of picturing things. Photographs never quite show and are freeing us from claims of ownership of images. Certain people get very, very, like, proprietorial about these pictures. And these are people, like, not the artists, right? You know, the artists are all dead, but people still claim to own this stuff. So, like, screw them. We made our own. Uh, what we were aiming for was uh, a design for visual and text communication about the shared capacities of everyday life. Now, this is a key situationist uh, concept in itself, detournement, uh, which means, among other things, a detour, a seduction, and a hijacking. They treated culture as a commons to be appropriated, but also corrected. Uh, they did it with text, images, cinema. I decided to mess with people by extending it to 3D printing. This is my uh, three de board. Uh, I called it an action figure. I got into a lot of trouble with the action figure collectors because his limbs don't move. And that is, yeah, so it's, it's not actually. But, you know, it, it's an action, uh, maybe it's an inaction figure or maybe it's uh, an action figure and his action is smoking uh, or his action is revolution. And, that, like, limbs isn't, so anyway. There's interesting, interesting conversations we had about this. Uh, it was designed by the toy designer Per Hansen and made by then Parsons student, now graduate, Rachel Law, uh, and became a copyright-free uh, STL file. Uh, I only made two series of the three de boards uh, and gave them all away. Uh, two now belong to former members of the Situations International. Uh, three de board has been remade and remixed by others, uh, much to the consternation of certain Guy de board cultists. I've been accused of selling toys. It's like, I don't sell them. What did you not get about this? Uh, people can, uh, just can't quite get their head around this concept of a physical three-dimensional thing based on information that's free, uh, which is sort of more or less the concept here. And these, uh, this is a sort of uh, mecha version by Patrick Lichty. He did a whole series that are like remixes of it. All right, different example. I wanted to write a book about games. Uh, could the writing of a book be designed as a game? I designed a one-player game for myself by writing the book within certain constraints, so I added extra rules to the process of writing. Uh, for example, all the chapters of my book, Game of Theory, are exactly 25 paragraphs long. Paragraphs are no more than 250 words, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole series of rules. Um, but then I wanted to play with others, so in collaboration with the Institute for the Future of the Book, we designed a network book where others could comment on it, and then the comments are included in the printed version as well. Uh, this was the birth of a thing called Comment Press, which is a plugin for WordPress that enables commenting alongside the paragraph rather than at the end of the text. Swear to God, has anyone who's ever written a book been involved in designing software for writers ever? Like, I really doubt it, right? Because it's like the comments are at the end of the text. It's just useless. It doesn't work. So the concepts are attached to the paragraph, which is the unit at which you need uh, uh, help with the writing, right? It's just no-brainer. Uh, all right, so Comment Press uh, was designed to do exactly that. And the comments are at the side, you know, like... Uh, and it was later implemented, among other places, uh, Lapham's Quarterly uh, has been using it. It's a, mag a mag popular magazine about history. All right, last example. Uh, I want to write a manifesto. And the whole point of manifestos as a genre is they should be translatable into lots of different languages and known far and wide. So I wrote my manifesto in an imaginary language, and I called it European. It's a language made up of equal parts Marxism, Church, Latin, and Business English, which are like the three transnational languages that I could think of. Uh, surprisingly, it actually sort of worked. Uh, the book ended up translated into 11 languages. The content page reads pretty much the same in every European language except Greek, because Greeks have their own abstract nouns for things. Everybody else uses Latin. Uh, so the word for abstraction in almost every European language except Greek is abstraction with different pronunciation and, you know, suffixes and whatever. So it turns out that uh, in European languages, most of the abstract nouns, which is to say concepts, are Latin. Uh, I consider the English language edition also to be translated from European like all the others and not to be better than the others. Uh, I th actually think the French one's better. 
than my version of it. Uh, it would make sense, right? Because Romance languages, the Latinate uh, abstract nouns, just they seem more natural. Um, all right, so in sum, uh, I think the point of design for concepts, and on, just on that, can we think about writing practices as design was the thing I, the point I wanted to make there, and train writers as designers, and, and not just design thinking, but the design, what was it, feeling, touching, all those things, right? Sensing, Sensing thank you. Uh, so I think the point of design for concepts is to show the form of an idea. It's not that the idea really comes first, however. Ideas always have a media form, so we might just as well design the form with our ideas intentionally, rather than just shoving them out there willy-nilly in media we never really think much about. One of the hardest things to communicate is a concept. A concept is an abstraction, a form of thinking that holds a lot of things together, but very gently. We think in concepts all the time, but they're hard to learn, to use, and we're often reluctant to change them once we've got them. We're more comfortable with changing surfaces than with changing forms. We're more comfortable with stories we can believe in or the communication of feelings, which, we, get, which are, we sense are real. Concepts are not opposed to surfaces or feelings or stories. Uh, they're just ways of achieving some distance from them so we can process them. Uh, given how dangerous certain stories and feelings are proving to be in the world, more concepts might be a good thing at this moment. But how is a concept communicated? Are there affinities between certain kinds of concepts and certain media? Perhaps the design of concepts ought to be a whole field of design, practice, and study in itself. I wouldn't say this has to be a kind of unruly design. Uh, that would presuppose we have a concept of what the rules are. Sometimes it's more fun to volunteer to be within a set of very restrictive rules, and Game of Theory's example here. And I stole that straight up stolen from a group called Olipo, which I should have mentioned, right? Uh, so I think there's uh, a benefit to bringing concepts and design together. Design is a diverse set of practices that together claim an agency in the world. Uh, in doing so, they collaborate and challenge other practices. People think of design as a subsidiary practice, limited to working with the form of things, but perhaps it could be more of that. Uh, and maybe the conceptual is one of the ways to get at that uh, expanded sense of, of, of design agency. Thank you. That's all I got.